All right, all right. I am here. It is early, but I got some things to do today. So I, you know, had to drop in early on you guys. You know, I told you I get started around 10 a.m. It is 9 17 on the East Coast. Um, hope everybody's doing all right this morning. I'm gonna give it a couple of minutes, then we're gonna get started. Bankroll Reed, what's going on with you? How you doing this morning? Going to get started in a little bit. NC Southbound, what's going on, player? Good to see you. Put y'all on mute and we're going to get started. All right, let's get this thing started, man. Bank Row E, salute. Re, salute. Said your last breakdown was impeccable. I appreciate that, sir. I appreciate that. I, I usually uh, try to take my time to get my facts together uh, before I come and holler at y'all. You know what I mean? Um, Sit a little bitty bitch, <laughs> a little bitty batch. Yeah, hey, I, I got some notes, man. I got, I got one, two, three, four. I got roughly six key points that I want to go over. H Town, Texan, 713. What's up, player? You get what I'm saying? I got a couple of points that I want to go into, man. BB7601, what's going on? <laughs> hey, keep pounding, my nigga. That's all we could do at this point. That's a fact. Uh, watching, you know, hope. That's all we got is hope, man. And, you know, um, you know, I, I want to, you know, I did two shows of the uh, Dave Canales ain't shit or whatever. So <laughs> I'm moving forward from this point on um, and I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be solution oriented. Right. Um, and not that he's not shit. I'm just I'm just, you know, joking. But, you know, my thing is that, you know, the resume just isn't impressive, you know, for an offensive uh, a head coach hire. You know, so some people are like. Well, you're not giving them a chance. And it's it's not necessarily about giving somebody a chance. But when you go and apply for a job, your resume don't look up to par. You know, uh, they're going to you know, they're going to scrutinize you a little bit. They're not going to be, you know, so excited to bring you on board. Now, with that said, I've been hired for jobs I was not qualified for. And it, it worked out. You get what I'm saying? I took the proper steps to kind of make things happen, man. And, and that's what I'm hoping that our boy Dave Canales can do, man, because this is this is not an unsalvageable situation, you know, if he handles things properly. There's there's some good foundational pieces on the Panthers. Uh, but, you know, like my boy just alluded to, sit that little bitty batch down. You know what I mean? <laughs> we're going we're gonna to talk about it, though. We're going to talk about it, man. Um, so, um, you know, uh, number one on my list, man. Is uh, let me make sure I, I share the link, man. Because I, when I get talking, man, I, I generally get in a zone and I forget to do it. So give me a second. Oh, I did, I did, I pinned it in the whole nine. Oh, we good, we are good. Let me uh, get my little setup right. All right. Man, man, I ain't think so many of y'all be up this early, man. I appreciate y'all for stopping by, man. Yeah, man. So, you know, moving forward now, man, we we, we got to, you know, he's the coach. 
we got to accept it. He's going to be here. Uh, well, who knows, right? He signed a, he signed a six-year contract, but you know with Dave Tepper, that doesn't really mean anything, right? Um, though I think, though I would be hesitant to say that Dave Tepper would fire someone again within one year um, because I think he sees that he's poisoned the well and how hard it is to get a coach. And, you know, a lot of people were saying, like, man, this is the best we could do. No, no, no. This is the best offensive coach we could do. It, Dave Tepper had in his mind that he wanted an offensive coach, and this was the last one that was kind of left for him, right? And it happens to be Dan Morgan's friend. Um, so how do we move forward from here, man? How do we move forward? You know, one of my things, um, you know, one of my first key points and how Dave Canales can get us back on a winning track and save his job, uh, you know, and, and not not in any particular order, but hire and retain the right people. Now, in this in this this bullet point, I've seen some things already that I don't like, and I, I see something that I I would be kind of okay with if he did right. Um, you know, the news came out that uh, the team is moving on from Chris Tabor. Okay, no big deal. Whatever, right? Then I saw that its team is also moving away from um, – they're moving on from um, James Campton, right? He has to sit Bryce, even have a chance. Yeah, I'm going to get there. James Campton is uh, being fired, and I highly disagree with that firing. What that says to me is that that new coach came in and said, Bryce got sacked a lot, and it's the offensive line fault. He's already looking the wrong way. You know, this is when this team plays through this, this strength is one of the best run blocking teams in the NFL. Is Iggy playing in the wrong position? Probably. Probably needs to be a right tackle, to be honest with you. Uh, and when you look at, um, I brought up the PFF grades for you guys. When you look at Moten, Moten was one of the better pass blocking tackles in the league last year, which was a little bit this year. which was a little surprising because it felt like he regressed a little bit. But his pass blocking grade, um, you know, uh, averaged out. Uh, as um as good as a pff grade so overall man i mean just a few tweaks a little bit of investment into the offensive line james campman I, I thought was a bad uh fire a bad firing one of the guys we should have retained right um then i'm hearing uh whispers of brad isaac brad isaac being um interviewed uh for offensive coordinator for the Panthers. Brad Isaac was the wide receiver coach of the um, Tampa Bay Buccaneers last year. He was also the wide receiver coach of the um, of the uh, Seattle Seahawks um, from uh, here. Let me bring up his bio. Actually, guys, let's do that. Give me a second. Isaac Idzik. Okay. So uh fourth season as the assistant Seattle uh, on the as assistant on the Seattle coaching staff, served as the assistant wide receiver coach from 2019 to 2022. So the assistant wide receiver coach, my bad. And offensive quality control assistance. Uh uh, for quarter of uh, the uh, off wait what offensive quality control assistant quarterback coach 2021 that's a mouthful offensive quality control assistant quarterback coach this is the uh, sounds like one of those assistant to the regional manager <laughs> uh positions but whatever whatever man, whatever um so then uh you know they say each of his four seasons with the seahawks Wide receiver Tyler Lockett amassed over a thousand yards receiving, in addition to establishing a new franchise record for single season receptions in 2020 with 100. Also in 2020, wide receiver DK Metcalf set a new franchise record with 1,300 receiving yards in that season, earning him his first uh, Pro Bowl selection. Um, 
is it wide receivers amass the second most uh, receiving touchdowns, 92, and third most air yards per target? Now, he wasn't the receiver coach here. He was the, uh, he was the Seahawks coaching staff serving as assistant wide receiver coach. He was assistant wide receiver coach. And, you know, uh, granted, a lot of these guys would have did this shit anyway. Omar, what's up, bro? Right letting Canal bring his own staff um, in. I see. Uh, oh, you mean Frank? Yeah, Frank. Yeah, because uh, that's why I'm getting that. He told, he told, he told Frank go hire the best of the best, and I think that was the smartest thing he ever did, man. Um, Tepper letting Canales. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what you meant. You know. So you know, he was the assistant wide receiver coach for the Seattle Seahawks. But you know, uh, l- let's be honest, man. I mean, you know, if I'm not so, yeah, Tyler Lockett. DK Metcalf and um, who else do they name? These guys were there before Isaac showed up. So, I mean, they're giving them credit for it, but, you know, whatever. I, I wouldn't mind this guy as a wide receiver coach, but as an offensive coordinator, man, right? So when I talk about hiring and retaining the right people, guys, He's a rookie head coach. He needs experience. He needs guys that have won at this level before. We're in trouble if he comes in and does the Matt Rule thing. You know what I mean? Now, one thing I did like, one thing I did like, um, I got word that they were also looking at uh, Marcus Brady for offensive coordinator. Marcus Brady is supposed to come in for an interview and I got his little I got his little bio up here. You guys should be looking at Marcus Brady with me. Um so uh looks like he played a little college ball or whatnot. Uh I like Marcus Brady's track record, right? Um, what the hell is this? This is like some CF uh, L's. Yeah, this is like some Canadian football league joint. All right, but yeah, he, uh, not important. So he started his NFL career with the Indianapolis Colts as the assistant quarterbacks coach in 2018. Um, he was the quarterback coach in um, 2019 and 2020 now keep this in mind guys you guys like to give you know a lot of you guys like to give the quarterback coach credit (laughs) for you know you know what the quarterback does unless you know the guy you like is the offensive coordinator and the offensive coordinator gets all the credit so you know good thing for him he was a quarterback coach and the offensive coordinator at one point right so it's a double whammy he covers all all boards right he can get all the credit so Quarterback coach 2019, 2020, promoted to offensive coordinator from 21 and 22. And then in 2022, he became the Eagles offensive consultant. And then in 20, uh, 2023, this year, he was a senior offense uh, for the Eagles. This would be an excellent hire uh, for Canales if, if he's really uh, going to hire Marcus Brady. Um, now, Marcus Brady, I had to go look, you know, where did he start with the Colts? 2018. So that means he saw Andrew Luck, a career high with Jacoby Brissett, a career high with uh, Phillip Rivers. Remember, everybody on the front right had their career high. Carson Wentz, they thought he was done, came in, had a career high. Matt Ryan, career high, right? He wasn't there for the the, the Gardner Minshew, but uh, – Man, I mean, this this would be a solid hire for offensive coordinator. Uh, Marcus Brady would be. Um, he has the he has the he has the uh, the, the experience, the success, um, and the whole nine. This is what you would look for, in not only you know the track record is what you would look for in a head coach or a coordinator. This would be an excellent hire, you know. So he definitely 
has to move forward and hire the right people. And then not only that, hire and retain the right people, put the right people in the right positions, right? Don't bring in Brad Isaac as the offensive coordinator where he's never coordinated anything before. Let me catch up with the chat before I move on to the next point. What y'all saying? Your defensive coordinator taking an interview with the Seattle Seahawks today, I think. You talking about um, uh, Ejiro Evero? Ejiro Evero. Because that, that's the thing, that's the piece that I'm missing right now. I don't know, essentially, Ejiro Evero is on the contract. Um, Ejiro Evero is in play for the Rams defensive coordinator job. Teams request meeting with, well, okay, interesting. Um, I, yeah, I see it. Um, yeah. Well, it says, is Gyro Arrow the right guy for the Seahawks coaching position? Um, why Seahawks head coach candidate is well. Yeah, you know, and the thing is, man, I would hate to lose it, man, because I would not have mind Gyro as the, the head coach. Oh, 2020, what's up, bro? I'm saving lives out here, man. I'm I'm trying to tell this man how to not get fired, man. I'm saving this dude, man. The dude y'all like. I'm trying. I'm trying to make sure he stays around, man. <laughs> What's up with you, though, man? Good to see you. Um, yeah, man, dad, man. So yeah, yeah. It it looks like uh, Ejiro. I, I really think homie gonna get a job, man. I really think he's gonna get a job. Morning, candy girl. Um, I saw it on NFL Network. Should have been the the head coach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just Google searching on the side, man. Um, let Canales bring in his own staff, uh, so no excuses. I mean, that's true. He's bringing in his own guys, man. He's, he's doing his own thing. Uh, yeah. Early bird gets the worm. That's a fact. Big tight. Yeah. So I mean, you know, Chris Tabor gone. Eh, solid move. James Campman gone. I think he's messing up already. You know, um, and then, you know, Brad Isaac is being um, interviewed for offensive coordinator is my understanding. And, you know, I don't know. Uh, wide receiver coach, cool, but not really good. But this Marcus Brady spot, this Marcus Brady, um, uh, if this hire goes through, this would be excellent, man. Just the track record is impeccable. Um, it would be the first move that gets me excited about this coaching staff moving forward. Um, you know, you know, I, I saw, you know, Cat Scratch Reader had a, a, a list of guys that they were also, you know, I know we were spending a lot of time on the first point, but, you know, want to kind of thoroughly get out all the information that I've seen and, you know, went through. You know, I saw Cat Scratch Reader had a a um, a list of guys that you know they think would be good and ma mainly they kind of catch the they kind of see what the wave is man they they kind of predict that um you know he's going to kind of keep reaching into his uh previous experience in coaching tree um Darrell uh Darrell Bevel who was the um alongside right as the offensive coordinator for the Seahawks um I'd have to look up Bevel. He was the offensive coordinator for the Seahawks for some period of time. Uh, and then seeing what his career was. I not a move I wouldn't mind. Um Brian Scutenheimer, offensive coordinator, uh, actually picked up the OC role for Seattle following the missile of Bevel. So Bevel got fired. I don't I don't know the whole politics scenes of the Seattle Seahawks, but it seems like our first dude got fired. He stepped in. Uh, and now he is the Cowboys offensive coordinator. Uh, wait, really? From Bevel 2018. Now he is the Dallas Cowboys offensive coordinator following a year of their offense minus in the playoffs, of course. And then since the move, to Brian has. Wait, so he's OK. OK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. OK. Let me look him up real quick, guys. Scootenheimer is the offensive coordinator for the Dallas Cowboys. I mean, 
Like, homie's not gonna. Dude ain't gonna. Wait, I'm a little confused. Give me a second, guys. I mean, he wouldn't move from offensive coordinator to offensive coordinator. I, I don't know about that. Um, you know, they got an offensive lineman, uh, you know, uh, replacement in here. Um, Carl Smith, I think he's been a quarterback coach in the league for a very long time, um, alongside Seattle for eight years. So, yeah, yeah, he's been the QB coach in Seattle for eight years. So there's a common theme here. And we talked about Brad Isaac. Um also, I heard Pete Carroll's son or something like that was in the talks, but there's no interview set up. They got Pete Carroll's son out here um, uh, as a possible, you know, coaching staff hire for the Panthers. Um, this hire done pissed me off. Uh, you up and early with the. Uh... <laughs> now, nah, hey, look, 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 look. OK, maybe the hire did piss me off. I was about to lie. Uh, <laughs> but you know, he ain't got me up early, man. I'm, I'm making a commitment to drop to y'all a little bit more Panther prime podcast. What's up, man? You know what I mean? I'm making a commitment to drop to you guys a little early, man. Today, man, we talking about moving on, man. We talking about, you know, I'm here to save our new coach, man. I'm here to help him, you know, because he needs help, man. He, he orchestrated one of the worst bucks offenses in years. Right. So, you know, I'm, I'm here to help him get his stuff back on track, man, and help him not get fired. And who's better to do it than a Panther fan, right? We know David Tepper. Um, so that that's that that's that's my first point, right? You got to hire, retain, and, uh, and you know, put the correct coaches in the right positions, right? Uh, the only thing that I'm really excited about so far is the, uh, you know, you know, our boy, uh, the offensive coordinator from the, the Colts, uh, I'm mean, the Colts, the, uh, the Eagles, um, Marcus, what's his name? You know, uh, I'm really excited about that one. Marcus Brady, my bad, but you know, the other ones, I don't know. All right. My next point guys. Number two is. I know you guys might not like it. Like me here to say this because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this with a, yeah, Brady, I'm going to give you a little caveat. Whether you like it or agree with it or not, Dan Morgan is a yes man. Okay. David Tepper's committed to Bryce. And so is Dan Morgan. That's why he got the job. That was a big thing. I, I know for a fact that was a big key point of the interviews that he went through where does the gm stand on bryce what how do you think we can build around bryce how do we fix this team how how can we move forward with bryce that 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 was a big key and that's probably why he didn't like any other gms because they really was talking shit uh, talking some shit where they're really just not interested in trying to figure out how to build around a player that they're not even sure about yet right um so with that said, with your GM being a yes man, Tepper being sold on Bryce, and you coming as a head coach who most likely told him the right things regarding Bryce about how you can fix him, you're going to have to find a way to quietly create some competition at the quarterback position. David Tepper, I understand this is going to be his first year David Tepper is going to kind of he's going to have his hands behind his back. He's not going to be able to move like you want to move. David Tepper isn't really doing a lot of interviews like that. I mean, he's been the head coach for, you know, I no, no I'm not going to say that because Frank Wright, it took about a week. It took about a week for Frank Wright to come out, you know, and do his interviews or whatever like that. But we haven't seen David Tepper since Drinkgate, right? So your hands are going to be tied, but you have to. Find a way to create competition at the quarterback position. Now, is that retaining retaining Andy Dalton is a good start? So then you have your veteran backup, right? That's competition level one, right? Then you have to create some kind of excuse. You and, and Dan Morgan have to kind of go in the back room and say, look, man, we, you know, we need our backup quarterback of the future, 
right? So if a quarterback slides to you in the fourth or fifth round or something like that, you can use that as an excuse to draft that quarterback. What we saw from Bryce last year, I'm thoroughly convinced that anyone we get in the fourth, fifth round of last year's draft and this year's draft would have done better. Elaine's cop. He said, H-Town, just here enjoying Elaine's commentary. He's talking good. Yes, sir. I appreciate that, PPP. <clears throat> so once you have the pieces in place uh, to create quarterback, uh, to create competition at the quarterback position, right? Um, <clears throat> my next point is, don't commit to things that don't work. Don't commit to things that don't work. This is a two-parter for me. All right? And, and I need Brad to really hear this. All right? Um, I'm not Brad, Dave. I need Dave to hear it. You, you listening to me, Dave? Don't commit to things that don't work. Part one, part one A, we're going to continue with the quarterback situation. Now, in point two, you secretly created quarterback competition. Now, the smart thing to do is to create a quarterback battle in training camp. I understand he can't do that, though. I understand his hands are tied. He got yes men. The, 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 the initiative is to fix Bryce. But don't go down with the ship. Give Bryce no more than three games. No more. That is about the level in which you can say you tried Bryce out and it's not working. And it will be best that if you like if he brought if he's performing poorly in that third game, if it's poor enough, it's it might be a good move to just sit Bryce at halftime and just say, yeah, you know what? We need to kind of just let Bryce get his mind right, you know, da da da, and settle down and let that new guy come in. Let Andy Dalton come in. And Andy Dalton comes in and plays significantly better. You have all the ammunition that Frank Wright had because, but Frank Wright was with the quarterback in his first year. So when Andy came in and did well, it was like, well, you know, it's a rookie. He has to learn. But now in the second year, if you get that type of opportunity where you find a reason to put another quarterback in and he plays well, ride with it because Bryce isn't going to get better. You're going to lose your job behind Bryce. And the quickest you can get away from Bryce, the better things are for you. I personally don't think he's qualified, but that doesn't mean he can't win. Doesn't mean he can't be successful. He, If he does this, he can definitely you know, he can definitely salvage the situation. Don't wear that quarterback guru, you know, title on your shoulder. Kevy Kev, what's up, man? Three to four games, and we need it needs especially any of the games in our division loss. Yeah, you know, at four games might be stretching it. Three games might be stretching it if we have a situation like we did last year where, what was it, two of our first three games were divisional games or something like that? We, we, we cannot play around with Bryce, right? Unless, you know, they're in some universe, there, there's this idea that, you know, maybe they'll just play Bryce out, get the first overall pick, draft a quarterback, but you know, I'll be honest, guys, like tanking is not a good strategy, man, because winning is a culture, right? You guys get on me all the time, say it's not all about statistics. I actually agree with you guys. Winning is a culture and a mindset. When you when you if you look through history, NFL, NBA, the same teams that keeps getting top draft picks. A lot of times you have these franchises that get top draft picks for years and they continue to lose. Because winning is a mindset. And if you just rock with Bryce the whole year long and you win two or three games again, 
the culture of this team might be irreversible or take years to reverse that loser mindset. Players get used to losing. This becomes a destination for players just to come and get paid, which it already kind of is. I mean, the, the Vikings safety already said that he came from uh, – that guy from the Vikings came down and said, well, he was just here because of the money, and he kind of took off. He kind of just relaxed. And now that he's back with the Vikings, he's going to take it serious now, right? So we've already developed that culture under Matt Rule. Bryce is coming up, uh, and I go somewhere and get $60 million for three months. Uh, 90 days. I'm with it. <laughs> uh, yep. Can't start off early already down the division. That's a fact. So, yeah. Now, I told you guys I had two parts to this. Part number two is of, of don't commit to things that don't work is you have to play to the team's strengths. Frank Wright threw the ball 59% of the time on offensive line that was mainly a run-blocking offensive line, excelled in that. He kept James Campman for that reason. 59% of the time he ran the ball, and that was like uh, – it's been a while, guys, since I did that show, but I was showing you guys that was like somewhere like top 10 or something in the league or something like that as far as run pass ratio. And, you know, last year the Bucs um, ran the ball 58% of the time. They weren't actually too far behind us, guys. They were not too far behind us. So – you know, and as I pointed out yesterday, you know, the only reason Baker threw for 4,000 yards was because he threw 150 more passes than he ever did, you know, in his career, right? He threw 566 passes. Prior to that, he threw 534 passes for 3,800 yards. So if you're, you're, you're doing the math, this year he threw 33 more passes than his career high where he, he threw 3,800 yards. 33 passes is about a game's worth of, of throws, which a quarterback averaging 2,200 yards a game, if Baker Mayfield would have threw 33 more passes in 20, 2019, he would have also eclipsed 4,000 yards, right? Uh, so you don't want that. You We've seen Bryce Young, the gunslinger, right? If for some reason you're afraid to pull the trigger on Bryce, the best you can do is take the ball out of Bryce's hands. Stick with the strengths. Run heavy. Third and seven, third and eight, second and nine. Run the ball. This is if you have to stick with Bryce. Then, lastly, Last point I got, man. And if y'all want to hit the link, man, it's all good. I had a short little soliloquy for you guys today. Wanted to leave some space. My last point. Well, hold on. What'd you say, internal? If Bryce needs a team to carry him and the team carries him uh, and we go 10 and 7, do you think we still get rid of him? Um, No, 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 no. Because... At that point, at that point, it's like, okay, Bryce is a game manager. We we created a situation in which he can be a game manager, though he's underperforming. That first round pick is now going to be later. So let's keep building the team. You get what I'm saying? Um, it, it, it wouldn't make sense at that point because I, if we went 10 and 7 with Bryce, the run game really got off. Because that's the only way he could be, he could really be carried, right? Like the run game got off, um, you know, and 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 um, you know something spectacular happened on defense. Now, my 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 next my next my last point, guys, is. Um, 
build in the trenches. This is a Dan Morgan slash Dave Canales. You guys must build in the trenches. Don't get cute. <laughs> 10 to 7. Laugh out my loud. We say story. Something's covering it. I think that says story uh, dreaming. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's a wild scenario, man. But, you know, the run game must have gotten off or something like that. Something something had happened, man. You know what I mean? Um, you know, all right. But anyways, um, you know, building the trenches. Don't get cute with it and go, Bryce needs wide receivers. He needs some fast wide. He's already had fast receivers. DJ Chart, 4-3 speed. TMJ, 4-3-9 speed. Mingo, 4-4 speed, right? He already has speed. Don't get cute and try to go in this draft and start building uh, and, and getting Bryce, you know, fast and speedy wide receivers that he can't capitalize on down the field. Build in the trenches. One of our, well, the Achilles heel of our our um, our defense last year was the run defense. Just in case you guys forgot, let me pull it up. Or you guys didn't, um, or you guys didn't catch that show. Um, And a lot of people, you know, most people caught the offensive show. A lot of people didn't catch the defensive show because I pretty much, I guess everyone kind of understood this defense is good. You guys know who the, you know, the usual suspects are on why this defense is good. Uh, but let me bring up our team real quick. And I should be sharing my screen. You guys should be seeing my screen right about now. My man, Nick Tri-State. What's up, brother? Nick, you talking? Nick, you on, man. I don't hear you, though. Not unless there's something on my end, guys. Do you guys hear Nick? Make sure it's not my audio. Hey, right, Nick, just, just drop out. Come back in, man. Let me move. Uh, let me move Streamyard over so I can see you when you do pop back in. All right, where was I? I was talking about building in the trenches. Let's do the uh, base package here. Talked about, uh, you know, Christian being below average, Colbert being poor. Um, but when you look at this run, this defense, man, you got Shy Tuttle, who run defense is 74th out of 174, 52, which is uh, below average. Uh, and then you had, um, you had Williams. 50 PFF grade run defense is very poor. 46 makes them 104th out of 37, 137 qualified defenders. You have to upgrade this. Imagine how much dominant of a team we would have been if the run defense wasn't a problem. If we had the proper pieces for um, our defense. And because we made a commitment or we should make a commitment to getting the ball out of Bryce's hands, upgrade the offensive line. Given that alone, we should get back to prominence, even even if, uh, you know, I wouldn't say even if you you um, 
you played Bryce, you know, stick to my first point about not being afraid to create competition. We should go back to the 4-3. If we switch back to the 4-3, um, we would still kind of have the same problem, right? Williams is not uh, – he doesn't fit the 4-3 at all. Shot Tuttle, his run – I mean, granted, he probably shouldn't be playing nose tackle, but, you know, I don't trust his run um, stopping ability in any set, right? So you would immediately need – you would immediately need another defensive tackle. Gross Matos is coming up on um, – is, this is this is Gross Matos last year. Is he coming up as a free agent? Even if he's not, Gross Matos is not the answer at four three. Yes, you can bring down Brian Burns um, and the four three like he's been playing. But honestly, I, I kind of like I kind of like Brian Burns in the three in the um, in the three four. Um, you know, pass rushing pass rushing wise, he got nine sacks this year, and he actually graded out extremely high as a um in pass coverage 77.7 third so i don't know i i feel like it it it, it takes you know you did this half effort job of going to a three four but it takes even more effort to go back to a four three almost i I really feel like the only thing we're missing really is a traditional nose tackle to really make this three four pop off you said my break ended early. Oh, okay. All right. Damn, damn, damn. I'm about to get off too, man. I wish I could hear from you. Nick Tri-State, speaking of Nick Tri-State, he got up here the other day, man, and orchestrated a, well, uh, the, the, the second one was shitty. But the first the first draft he did was beautiful, man. I mean, he got an offensive lineman. He got two starting defensive linemen. Kept Brian Burns. I mean, got a traditional nose tackle. Um. Yeah, he looks miles. Uh, Derek Brown looks miles better than the three four. Yeah, the three four allows Derek Brown to use his athleticism a little bit more. What? Where do I see nine sacks? Did he not have nine sacks? Not unless this joint got it wrong. PFF has him at uh, nine sacks. No, no, I got you. PFF has him at nine sacks. I thought it was eight, but they got him at nine. Hold on. Let's, let's, verify, the, let's verify the numbers. Hold on, hold on. What did Brian Burns have? Oh, man. Actually, I'm, actually, I'm glad you're here. Um, I'm glad you're here because I... I uh, do you see my screen? Do you see his PFF grade, sir? Do, do you see the PFF grade? Let's start there. Now, 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 yeah, that's actually interesting. PFF has him at nine, and then you know the ESPN stats has him at eight. Let's go with let's go with let's go with the latter. Let's say he had eight sacks. I, I don't know what that's about. Look now, up uh, my man's above. My man came in as above average. Run defense is average, right? And then as a pass rusher, he's above average, 29th out of 106 off the edge, his first year switching. And then 77.7, which puts him third amongst linebackers in coverage. And 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 this is one of the best years he's had overall, man. I, I mean, you know, add the fact that Bryce Young had us down, man. I could easily see this as a 10 plus sack season now i i know i told you guys 15 sacks i i'll eat that i'll eat that i was completely wrong about that i was completely wrong about that <laughs> <I'll>, <laughs> but you know we're giving opportunities double sacks you get what i'm saying <laughs> but yeah i was saying um you got to keep brian burns man because i feel like you know, it, these guys, man, these guys we had in the trenches was really the problem, man. In the 3-4, you need guys that can anchor, man. These guys did not do it. Tuttle, and I say these guys, Deshaun Williams, Todd Shy Tuttle, they didn't do a good job. Because what needs to happen is the this defensive lineman needs to just occupy um, 
the tackle and let the defensive end roam free. Or he occupies the tackle to the point where Ryan Burns gets an angle and it, be, it becomes an awkward blocking assignment because you have two dudes to worry about. It's harder to block Brian Burns. You know, these guys aren't normally supposed to get sacks. A lot of people get it confused because they think about guys like um, they think about guys like um, what's your boy's name from the Houston Texans who retired. Who's that Houston Texans? Um, uh, Houston Texans all time sack leader. Uh, who is who am I thinking about? J.J. Watt. People think about J.J. Watt, right? J.J. Watt played in the three four. And he, my man, my oh my God, are you are you you here to tear me up about Brian Burns, man? What's up, Monk? <laughs> hey, hey, y'all, he ain't laying making shit up right in front of y'all goddamn face. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm gonna turn you up a little bit, Elaine. It's a really sad anymore. Turn your ass up. He won't he lay, go no go back go back to that Brian Byrne layout you just had up there, donkey. Go oh, go back to that Brian Byrne. I mean, that's, oh yeah, it was beautiful, man. It was now because I'm looking at Derek Brown sitting right there with a 90.1, and there uh, you, you got Brian Burns. See, Elaine wants y'all to believe that half of this shit up there is average. Yeah, mate. No, so, a 74.1. That's a goddamn D on the no, grading no, scale, Elaine. No, PFF, PFF grades out 60 is average. So 60 is an average player. 70 is above average. Wait, 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 wait. You, you, <laughs> Did you miss? Did you miss the episode? Ah, you funny as hell, dog. Hey, 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 yeah, how you doing, motherfucker? Love him, a goddamn player, dog. Yeah, if, it, if it ain't bright, Elaine, yeah, you gotta yeah. do me a favor, though, Elaine. Yeah. Do me a favor, yes, dog. Yes, sir. Back up off Brian Burns' ass just a little bit, dog. I'm, just I'm just a little saying. bit. You're acting like I'm standing behind the holding him or something, man. I'm, I'm, I'm really, I'm really just giving you the numbers, man. Yeah, yeah I mean, but not, nah, but. Does those PFF grades say to you, like right there, the run defense is 63.2, pass rush, Elaine, 75.2. Now, I'm, I, man, I would man, I would have you look another play up, another elite pass rusher and see, and look at those exact numbers, overall, run defense, pass defense, because none of those numbers there, Elaine, 74. 74 one that ain't that's not gonna, that's not elite dog i'm gonna pull up the scale for you it's not no no it's not elite because elite starts at 90. elite starts at 90. but 60 is an average uh 70 is above average 80 is good and um oh, here i'm gonna pull it up for you guys again well I, well I, looking at his stats would you say he had a productive season i would say so especially this um, so we can't we can't we can't ignore this he was a linebacker. He didn't pass rush the whole time. He graded out as one of the best coverage guys at linebacker. Oh, Elaine. I, I mean, 77.7 .7 coverage grade. You didn't hear – people go, I didn't hear about him in coverage, but I, that's the point of a good coverage guy, right? How many times do you hear J.C. Horn's name? Give him some credit. Yeah, now. yeah, that, that, yeah. Come on now, come on now, because I'm sure JC coverage is higher than seventy seven point uh, seven. Well, yeah, I mean, and, yeah, and he yeah. barely played. Well, yeah, he's an elite. He's an elite corner, man. I mean, yeah, I mean, eighty three, which is. Hey, hey, look at that, Elay. His coverage rate was the highest grade he was graded. What What does right. that tell you? Right. I mean, he's an elite corner. He's an elite corner. And and, and just real quick, I'm just like, so you you know I. I know you'd be thinking I'd be making up Man, stuff. Why, why is J.C. run defense grade higher than Brian Burns? Stop it, man. It's, they, they, it's, it's, it's graded uh, on the look at him, Look at him, look at him, look at him, look at him. I mean, come on now. I mean, you wouldn't put J.C. Horn on the defensive line and, you know, and expect him to. It's graded based on their position. Now, Boy, you got to stop, man. Yeah, you got to stop. Right? Well, why you throw, why you throw uh, Brian Burns' coverage grade out there if it's – Based on a position, Z Lane. Right. I said, but I, 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 I did, I did say, um, I said for a linebacker, he's one of the best coverage linebackers, right? All right, so I he, got you. So, hey, Leo, uh, my guy, uh, Elaine got the goddamn heat meter up there, the heat scale up there, thirty right, very right, poor. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, I see, I see it, I see right. it, and ninety okay. graded elite. 
<laughs> but we got this. Let's 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 go back. Let's go back and look at it with different context now, right? We're gonna look at this situation with different context and have newfound respect for Brian Burns and what he did, right? Um, so we we did see 74s and above average, right? Yes, sir. So, yeah, yeah. These guys, man, these are the problems, man. This is this where, is the, where, where are you talking about? Uh, uh, are you talking about the two D, the the the, the, the two the middle guys? Is that what you're saying? Nah, you can't put that on them, Elaine. In a three, you can't put that on them. This man would have had the 15 sacks. I didn't know they would be this bad up front. Huh? This guy should have had 15 sacks if these guys were anchoring properly. Yeah, my man right here, Deshaun Williams. If you going off of the PFF, he done took a major fucking decline, doggy. Major decline. Uh from from twenty twenty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, twenty twenty was the only good year he seemed to have had, and then it was below average, below average, below. I mean, damn, even even worse here, right? His run defense forty six is one hundred and fourth out of one thirty seven. Yeah. Yeah, we yeah. I mean, uh, they 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 didn't really give you any solid production. I mean, and that was evident on the field, though, Elaine, in gameplay. Yeah, facts. facts. You didn't hear that name all year long, huh? And then you know, here's Shot Tuttle, three hundred pounds, trying to play nose tackle. Nose tackles get double teamed routinely, man. He's just getting thrown out the way. Look at this. Yeah, shit. yeah, yeah. I'm looking at it. I'm looking at it. Nigga ain't no good, dog. They ain't what? no good. I mean, you can see it. You look yeah. at the numbers, you can't argue it. But see, you go back to Brian Burns, though, Elaine. Oh, he should be it. leading a lot in at least a couple of those categories for for you to for you to constantly, you know, ride his ass like that. I've always maintained, though. I've always maintained. Everybody talks that elite shit, and I said he's above average. Above average is worth about twenty five million. Because above average defensive ends are hard to find. They, they, they got them right at a right at about average. You know right, I mean? right at about oh. average. About, yeah, above average don't reward you no fucking 28 million, 25 million in the league, especially at his position. I, but I would say I would say pass rusher is hard to find, man. So that's where he kind of, you know, that's where he kind of benefits, man. I mean, he lined up where he lined up in the on the D-line, the box, and they even got stabs to slot corner. You know what I mean? Lined up once at yeah, once. Yeah, yeah. Elaine, oh, stop it, man. He's gone, man. dog. He, he won't be a Panther beyond twenty three. Yeah, you you got a Brian Byrne jersey? Uh, yeah, I do actually. <laughs> well, hey, I suggest you got damn try to catch him out there at the uh, Chick fil A mm -hmm. next Sunday. See if you can't get it signed. Yeah, no, and no, he's supposed to be out there at the Chick fil A getting away milkshakes or some shit next weekend. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna have to roll up on him, man. You know what I mean? I am, yeah, I am see if you the... can't get your jersey signed because he out of here, doggy. He out of yeah. here. So, I mean, we can't ignore the fact that you know he's one of the highest rated players on this defense, man. Roberts Woods well, wasn't, yeah, surprised. yeah. I mean, and that ain't saying a lot looking at that defense. What you what are you saying? Louvu, Louvu's rated higher than Brian Burns. If I'm looking at this. You got Xavier Woods rated higher. <laughs> uh, Jeremy Chin also, not Jeremy, but JC rated higher. I think that Dante J, hey, do me a favor. Click on Dante. That Dante shit is a fluke. I don't like this. It's, it's, it's average. He, he's an average corner. He's an average corner. Yeah, yeah, especially this year. This year. Yeah. This year. He did, I, I'm, yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah, I just had to look at that. Because really never really, they never never really graded him high as well, because, a rookie. If well, I'm looking at the PFF, they, they, Dante Jackson gets toasted a lot, but his speed allows him to recover. It, where it, the, the well, damage, not really, not 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 according to PFF. Well, he yo he Dante Jackson takes a lot of chances, man. If you remember that uh, Panther, uh, even his own teammates got on him about it, man. If you remember that uh, Amazon Prime thing with they did with the Panthers and they had a little intervention uh, with them, they yeah, were like, yeah. you, you know, you, you fucking up, man. You know, like you, the interceptions is covering up the mistakes you're making, man. But, you know, you're fucking up. Um, you know, look at this, man. Pass yeah, I remember. I remember. You right. Yeah, yeah. Shout out Candy Girl the Trucker. I see y'all in the chat. I'm turn Elaine ass up a little bit. We turn him up a little bit this Saturday morning. He, yeah, I've been watching you since you went live, dog. Shit, you should have been on the TV since you went live. <laughs> Look at that. Passer ratings to a, a passer rating allowed 111. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I, I mean? see that. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see that. I see that yards per reception and that yep. and the fucking first down. I mean, that's a first down, twelve point four. That's a first down every time he give up a kick. Yeah, that's a fact. I mean, I mean, just this, this motherfuckers, uh, motherfuckers that people think are good, man. Y'all got to take a, a second look at them, man. I mean, same. Here, I mean, man. The, yeah, the analytics don't lie, dog. Yeah, man. Analytics yeah. don't goddamn lie. Jeremy Chin, them they're averaging a perfect QBR to opposing quarterbacks, man. That's that's another dude everybody well, seems to love. I, well, I can't argue with you, dog. Ain't nothing I can argue about. I, I'm looking at this shit. You got to shout out Leo in the chat. Say Leo. Burns is invaluable to the Panthers. Facts. Talk that shit. Talk Facts. that shit. We, we getting Uncle on board today on Brian Burns, man. So you No, know, no, we, no, no. Here you ain't. Burns we, gone, we, dog. And I'm happy about it. I couldn't be happy about it. <laughs> where, where, where's my He's out of here, Elaine. He's out of here. No, nah, no. Nah, I think they're going to put the tag on him, man. What's Jeremy Chin? Now, now, they got Jeremy yeah, yeah, I don't know. I, I'm be, I'm betting he gone. I'm I'm a betty out there, big. Nah, if, if we trying to, if you trying to win now, which you need to be, because David Tepper don't fuck around. You need to keep all your talent, man. I mean, look at Jeremy Chin. Opposing quarterback uh, rating allow 144. Isn't 156 perfect? Yeah. Yeah. Get the fuck out of here, man. And he also getting up at eleven point six yards a clip. That's also a first down per. I mean, you gotta let me uh, click on Jer uh, JC real quick. Let me see the oh. little the little show and he had. Yeah, I mean it was amazing, man. I mean, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna click on him one second. Yeah, I, I wouldn't give a fuck about Brian Burns if he left yesterday, dog. Be honest <laughs> with you. <laughs> you gonna you it's definitely a player you're gonna miss, man. So JC's getting better every single year, right? Um coverage grade 83, defensive grade 84, uh run defensive grade 79.7. We can jump into the advanced analytics. Out wide, he mainly lined up out wide 241 snaps, which I'm surprised he got that many snaps. What do you mean? I uh, didn't I'm seem surprised like he, he got that many snaps. It didn't feel like he played a lot. I feel like even when he came back, damn, sure like, did not not two hundred and forty one snaps. But hell, that's the equivalent. They say sixty snaps on defense. This defense was playing fifty to sixty snaps a game. Oh, it's like four or five. Uh, games. So you say about roughly forty snaps a game. Yeah, uh -huh. they that ain't that ain't hard to get to two hundred snaps. Nah, that's a fact. That's a fact. Felt like they had them on a snap count. So yeah, yeah look at this. Opposing quarterback rating allows 88. Uh, passer rating, uh, average passer rating starts at 100. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm looking at their yards per reception, yeah. less than a first down. I can, I, we can live with that. One miss. Say nine eight. times out of 10, if you complete a pass, so oh, JC Hard, yeah. it ain't going to be enough to move the chain. That, that's, right. that's what I see when I'm looking at them, when I'm looking at the analytic right there. That's exactly what I see. You can, you can, you can. He just didn't get an interception or nothing. But I, I give, I say that that's uh, you know, equivalent to the nigga not playing no games now. Yeah. So targeted twenty eight times and only allowed uh seventeen um receptions. So you know that's about a fifty three percent completion rate against him or something like that. It's a little higher than that. Uh, 28, 14, 14 would be 50 percent, would it not? Yep, and what you say it was 17 to 28, yeah, it was like 55 percent. It's just my rough, yeah, map. yeah, yeah, right in there. you right, you're yeah. right, brother. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, he was on point, man. He was on point. How many games did he fucking play this year? 20, yeah, 200 snaps is about four or five games worth, man, if I was to guess. Yeah, yeah, roughly, roughly about three, four. Yeah, I would love to see that. They don't have that count, though. Yeah. 6 one, 200. JC a solid nigga, he's though. He solid. just, I don't know what it is, man. He didn't be five. getting hurt, though. Yeah, yeah, I've seen, I mean, shit, I've seen him listed as somewhere like 6-2 uh, at 1.2, man. So, yeah, definitely 6-1 and some change. Um, So, big, big corner. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Long on the whole nine, man. So, you know, that, that's what it is, man. A lot of people mad at Burns, man. But, you know, it's some real culprits on this team that are really fucking hey, this I'm team I'm looking up. at the list of colleges. I see Acorn State and Chattanooga. 
Yeah, 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 LA Tech. That that's why we playing how we playing. They getting these motherfuckers from out of nowhere. Look, look, Eastern <laughs> Illinois. What the fuck is that, man? You don't draft exactly. nobody but a six round, I guess, a Eastern Illinois nigga is, yeah, yeah, is where Shaq. you go. When Shaq went out, man, this dude's the guy who stepped in for him, right? Run deep. Yeah, hella good as far as pass, the pass, and pass yeah. potential. He did good, if you ask me. Not in okay. coverage, but as far as blitzing, he yeah. did all right. Yeah, had a couple interceptions this season as well. Did he? Yeah. Let me look. But he was actually he was 80th out of 83 linebackers as far as run defense. So if you're wondering yeah, why we picks he had this year too. Yeah, well, he might have led the team in interceptions this year. One. He had one. Might have led. <laughs> we didn't get a lot of interceptions, man. Yeah, what I say, oh, yeah, one interception. He might have led or tied the team with that. Yeah, sacks, uh, you know, uh, one sack, 11 stops. Stops is uh, a positive play for the defense. So behind the line of scrimmage, uh, you know, no yards uh, or whatnot. You know, and actually, man, uh, Ryan Burns and 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 and, and Derrick Brown has the, have the same number of uh, of pressures, I think. Yeah. I know I know Derek Brown had more tackles for loss though. Well, I mean, that's to be expected, man. I mean, if we're looking at Derek Brown, right? I mean, we're looking at Derek Brown. Well, it shouldn't be if Brian Burns had give you 17 sacks. I mean he's 17 I'm, sacks. I'm talking, I'm counting sacks included when it comes to Brian Burns and Derek Brown. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I get it. I mean, Derek Brown, I mean, he way he way up there, Elaine, like compared to Brian Burns and Derek Brown. If you're looking at these analytics, who would you pay first, dog? I mean, I, I would pay Derrick Brown because you build from the trenches out. And then I think Brian Burns belongs at linebacker, right? And because, you know, Derrick Brown is elite and Brian Burns is above average, you you make sure you prioritize your elite guys, right? I mean, hey, that's a no-brainer. I ain't about to tell you nothing stupid, right? <laughs> I'm not on the bandwagon that heavy. You know, I got eyes. Yeah, but let me ask you something while we're here. Yeah. Derrick Brown, first rounder, seventh pick. Yeah. Was that a reach there? It was a steal. Crazy as hell. So I don't know. I, I got to ask you that question. First round, seventh overall selection for Derrick Brown. Like, like, like right now, like given what he's given us in the past, like even from a rookie to now. Yeah. Would y'all say that seventh that seventh overall pick could have been a reach for him? Because no. ultimately he went top ten. You know I mean now, now go go to his PFF and, and through his career real quick. I'll yeah, show yeah. you what I'm talking about. He's, he's elevated big time. I mean, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna I'm show you what I'm talking about. I'm gonna yeah. show you what I'm talking about. If you go, if you pull it up, because right. I'm sure I'm sure this was his best year by far, and I'm sure that he had two back to back years that was the same. But yeah. if you look at his rookie year, graded at a sixty-one, that's 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 what below average, average correct? No, that's average. Is average. Round average, I right, you say average. Yep. My question is, was it was a seventh overall pick too high for his ass? Nah, man, because 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 defensive linemen generally take a while to kind of translate into the league until they hit their prime. They generally take two or three years. If you're talking about defensive positions that take a while to translate. Defensive tackle, defensive end is one of them. Because if you remember, we brought K1 short in, got him in the second round. He didn't really start the first two years, right? It yeah, he's a second rounder. Derrick Brown, a first round seven pick. Yeah, but top ten. No, no, that's a fair point. But I, I, the point that I'm making is that these defensive linemen, it's one of the hardest positions to translate into on the defensive side. Yeah, they they can easily get washed in and out. I, yeah, yeah, yeah I've seen it happen, me. even on the offensive line. You know what I mean? Big, you big come girl. in right at college, but NFL is about technique. You got big motherfuckers uh, trying to block you now, so it takes a while to learn. Yeah, yeah. Shout out Elaine for pulling the analytics out, letting y'all know exactly how fucking whack Brian Burns is. You know what I mean? See, shout out to Elaine. That's all he doing. That's all you doing. I thought I was putting shit on Front Street, letting y'all know that nigga don't need to be paid. Shout out Elaine. Yeah, Elaine is letting y'all know Brian Burns. Must go. 
Now I thought I was showing the opposite, but okay. No, nah, that uh, ain't now. Nah, no, nah, that ain't what you're showing me. That's why I pulled up. I said, yeah, Elaine tripping. Elaine, I thought he liked Brian Burns. I said, let me see if I can't kind of, you know, you turn his ass a little bit. But you're absolutely right. He don't deserve a big contract. <laughs> you're absolutely right. No, nah, man. Above average defensive ends are hard to find. I got an episode coming on that, man, too, man. Just really showing y'all how hard it is to find pass rush and how you need to be appreciative when you have but them. but what you got to say about derrick brown's coverage grade he he like well he doesn't have one oh he's 67 i guess he does he yeah does. yeah he do got one it's right there look at it look at it it's right there. yeah yeah i mean listen listen these are these are these are based on limited snaps and coverage. Right? <laughs> oh, <I don't>, <laughs> nah, see, Eli, what you're missing, man, is the batted balls. That's why the grade exists right there. He got a he got a number of batted balls this year. That that's why <laughs> Eli, shout out Leo. You hear that nigga try to make a case for it. Nah, nah, bro. Wait, wait, good morning, brothers. Good morning. I appreciate y'all. I hope everybody's doing fine. Brother. Yes, sir. Uh, Brother, brother Lane, you a nice guy, brother. But, you. All right, you're, you're welcome, brother. But I, I believe you're being absurdly disingenuous. Brian, Burns. Um, <laughs> when it when it comes to Brian Burns, brother, you know, brother, <laughs> you, you you comparing him? You you saying that he's a? I know. I asked you this. I, I posed the question: Is he oh, invaluable to the Panthers team? Yeah, you are you asking me that? You said you asked me that before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was asking. I was posing a question in the chat. Do you believe his production is invaluable to the Panthers team? <sighs> Not invaluable, but important. Okay, okay. No, 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 no. Okay, that's a there's a, diff, there's a difference. Oh, absolutely, having a productive defensive end or the uh, outside linebacker, anybody that allows you. To you know, stifle the off the, the the opposing team's offense at any point is very very valuable, but comparatively speaking, right. to other other players at his position, yeah, you know he rank you know where he rank up though, brother. You know that right? Do I know where he ranks? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's probably it's probably like you know in the high teens, twenties, or something like that. Whoa, brother! Whoa, <laughs> statistically speaking, brother. Statistically speaking, well, hey Leo, you hear him this morning, don't you? Out of hand. I hear no, no. I, I hear the brother now, and I bless his heart. But this man is ranked thirty seventh in sacks, yeah, brother. Thirty seventh, brother. High teens, yeah. me and teens. What the hell? I, I think he's ranked thirty second, thirty second or thirty six, somewhere in there. Yeah, I, I thought I looked at it for a call on because I, I didn't want to uh, say things that weren't true. I actually saw thirty seven. You know what the pen. This would have yeah. been better off doing this way. This, this, this why this why Federer and those guys had to go. Kayvon Thibodeau, Thibodeau, pardon me, was there, and we drafted because they was at they, they they was at a conundrum whether they should pay Burns at the time anyway. So they mm. drafted Icky, but they yep. should have drafted Thibodeau if yep. they were really thinking, you know, because Icky Aquano was a better run blocker, but. You know, Matt Rule and, T and Tepper. I mean, and Matt Rule and, and the guy. They didn't know what they were doing at the time. They 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 were they didn't know what they were doing. They should have drafted Thibodeau. Thibodeau had more sacks. Ain't this Thibodeau's second year? Mm -hmm. Okay, Thibodeau had almost twelve sacks. So Brian Burns was already on the team five years. He he already he, Thibodeau had maxed out that sack this year alone. So they made a mistake. But, brother, you can't make an argument for a player. He, he only missed one game. He didn't miss a bunch of games. You can't make an argument for him, brother, as far as being, you know, an integral part in the Panthers' defense going forward at the rate that yeah. he's asking. Yeah. Facts, I, Leo. I, Facts. I can't make an argument. Let, let, me, let me try to make an argument, though. Let, let, yes, me, sir, let me just just follow me, right? You know, we last saw him in a 4-3, and he had 12 sacks, right? He was, for all intents and purposes, Brian Burns is on the way up, had uh, seven sacks, nine sacks, nine sacks, 12, 
right? That's pretty good production from a defensive end. This year, we moved him to linebacker. And, you know, I guess I'm going to go with eight because there's two different conflicting numbers. He had eight sacks. But I think we just didn't have the pieces to make the 3-4 work. And given his size and his speed in a 3-4, he can be very valuable if we fix the problem on the defensive line and actually get guys that can anchor and do their job on the defensive line in the 3-4. This is not a traditional nose tackle. This is not a defensive end who did a good job at anchoring the uh, the ends. Those defensive linemen are highly important in 3-4 to make everything work for the linebackers, right? So I don't think it's time to throw away Brian Burns. I think it will be a huge mistake. I think he'll go to another team, and you'll see those double-digit sacks again. Yeah, he need to go to another team. But, but, but brother, let me ask you this. was When he got drafted, what were we running, a, a 4-3 at the time he got yeah. drafted? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. so – when he got drafted, so Lee, uh, mm -hmm. the starting point was that, you know, he could play a 4-3, but it'd be better suited in a 3-4. But we brought him in in a 4-3. Okay. So, so when you so put him in a 3-4, if, if, if he was projected to be better in a 3-4, yeah. and then years down the line when he done learned the NFL, the NFL slowed down, he should know the NFL game. He, he should have developed technique. They finally say – Put him in a three four to where a lot of you niggas would would swear up and down that's the position he should play in. Right, right. right. So he, when he they gets play, there, they played him. Well, yeah, there when he, he gets there, worse. Leo, he has a significant drop off of a season. If you a ask significant me. drop off. Well, well, His problem well, is he 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 he's a hired gun. Brian Burns is not a three down defensive player. Yeah, he a rotational he's a, piece. He's exactly, oh, that's he what he is. Man. What? Bro, that's just calling what the fuck it is, Elaine. He said, yeah, that, he's his, a rotational piece. He's better off coming in on passing downs. That's yeah, just Elaine, that, that, that's his stats, Elaine. That's not our. That, that's not our opinion. Statistically, comparing, compared, comparably speaking to other pass rushers who don't play all three downs, that's yeah. his stat line. I, I would say this again, though. Coverage Gray was very good at linebacker, so I think it's where he belongs, right? He's a better in coverage with his speed and size than he is anchoring on the defensive line. So it is the right position for him. So, yeah, you're switching position. There's time that you need to learn. On top of that, again, we didn't have the pieces to make the 3-4 work. Brian Burns, I mean, Derek Brown is just elite. He did his thing. But these other guys, they're supposed to anchor and let the linebackers roam free. You'll see everybody do better if you get better up front. Okay, so yeah, what do yeah, you pay, yeah. so so what do you pay him as being a very good coverage outside linebacker? I think because I think a pass rusher, he he mid level. Well, he Leo, averaged. Leo, uh, if they if the Panthers sign him, right? If, let's say they they franchise him as a outside linebacker, he ain't getting no more than eighteen five. He yeah, stop because right that's there that, that's a that's a sign Riddick and his production. Averages out. So Elaine, I feel you, brother, but he's not 25, 23, 30. Yeah, yeah, but 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 Leo, if the Panthers sign him as a defensive end, he's he's gonna get about 23 and change. See the significance of what he gets paid with Carolina, whether they tag him. Is what they tag him as, as an outside linebacker or as a fucking defensive end. It's going to so, be an outside linebacker, brother. You and, got and, damn and, right and, it is. But, and, but, but and, I'll, I'll and say I this. I'll say yeah. this. If Dan mm -hmm. Morgan comes in and ultimately decides to, let's say, change this defense to a 4-3 base or some shit of that nature, I mean, I, I wouldn't give a fuck how they sign him. Me personally, Leo, I'm letting him walk. I'm oh. saluting him. I'm saying thanks for your service here oh. in Charlotte. You hear me? We, we appreciate you as a Carolina Panther, whatever you gave to us on the field. But 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 I think right now would be a, a, a good time to mutually part ways, goddammit. Let well, Brian I'm, Burns walk. Let him walk. Elaine, Dog, I'll get Elaine, let me ask you a question, case. Elaine. Why haven't the Panthers signed him to a contract, period? Uh, because they seem to be far apart in numbers, not from the lack of trying. Okay, but, but I don't know, I don't know, brother, because it's lack of trying. Because if the Panthers really wanted to sign him, they would pay him what he asked for. Well, Facts, you, Leo. It wouldn't be no well, damn negotiation. You have to mm -hmm. understand that that pass rushers and quarterbacks always get overpaid. 
That, that's just the reality of it, right? <laughs> it's, 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 that that's I mean your boy for the Saints ain't worth 150 million dollars. This is this is this is the nature of the two positions. But two why the Panthers are not willing to overpay for Brian Burns, in your opinion? They, they, well, I think I think whatever the numbers are is probably you guys are saying 18. I think the Panthers are offering something well into the 20s. I think no, Panthers no, 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 no. I was saying about about the outside linebacker position, but this is like this right now is it's gonna be 20 million dollars. It don't matter at the as an outside linebacker, but. The Panthers being Why would y'all apart. say twenty million if that's not the that's not the correct numbers? Look it up. The, 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 you know what I'm talking about, about coming it's, out it's, right it's now. Out no, no, no. I'm talking about right now. Um, if there was an outside linebacker that was available in free agency, that'll be the going rate. They would. That, that's the going rate for outside well, linebacker. Well, Leo, let's level set though, right? Because outside linebacker is line. There, there's two different designate. Uh, designations of linebackers, right? You have your off-ball linebacker, right? The guy who's in a 4-3 who drops in coverage and, you know, makes tackles and stops the run. Then you have your edge rusher, your your rush in in a 3-4 who's basically a defensive end but plays linebacker, i.e. your your Watts, your uh, – Well, your well, well, hey, hold on, uh, uh, Elaine. He'll be on the depth chart – He's categorized that position you're as speaking. A linebacker, as a linebacker. Yeah, as a outside linebacker, but not an saying, edge rusher, not a I'm defensive saying, end. But what I'm saying outside is, linebacker. That's what he's categorized as. But I'm saying on three, four linebackers, three, four linebackers don't get sacks because of the way of the defense. I mean, four, three linebackers don't get sacks. Well, 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 I think don't that's what, not, that's three, not four? true, why man. Playing the three, four? That's not true. Luke Keekley was a was a prime middle linebacker no, in a four three scheme and was getting no, crazy. Uh, no, no. Luke Keekley, hey, he had twenty tackles for a loss one year and oh, no, no. and almost double digit sacks, Leo. Well, what I'm saying is, you've never heard of a four-three linebacker getting double-digit sacks consistently. It's not the nature of the. Di- no, I mean, but you, Lane, you take the great Lane. Ray Lewis. Ray Lewis was even in the bay. Oh, yeah, I think he had double-digit sacks. Lane, why? I think Watt playing a three-four. Lane, I think Watt playing a three-four. Yeah, JJ Watt was a three-four right, defensive. Right, right. JJ Watt is the exception. He was a defensive end in a three-four, right? So, so, so what's the so, average? He averaged okay. what? Nine, no, I, I, don't know, I, I really, I really don't get the, the argument you're no, making. I know, I know, I know. Brian Burns. Let me, let me get this off. Let me get this off. Right in a three-four, you have three down linemen. Right. Generally, these three, these three down linemen. If you look through the history of three, three-four, these down linemen don't get a lot of sack. Do you? Though you do have the exceptions, like a Hall of Famer like T.J. Watt or somebody like that. Now, in a three-four, the linebackers come off the edge you don't know who's coming but they they rush those guys as a fourth rusher right those guys in those defenses tend to get a lot of sacks they get paid differently because the nature of their job is to rush the passer in a three four the linebackers they get paid differently than a four three linebacker whose job is to stop the run and assist in coverage so a lot of times three four linebackers will get paid a lot more this is why your boy uh, uh, your boy uh, Watt just got what thirty million dollars or something like that. He's a linebacker, but he plays in a three-four. He gets sacks. Brian Burns would be a edge rusher, uh, an edge rusher as a linebacker in a three-four. He's going to get paid differently than your off-ball linebacker in a four-three. So all all I'm saying is that about twenty-five million is fair for him. Well, I, well, just just to rebuttal what you said. Huh, Brian, Brian, come on now. Yeah, yeah, just the rebuttal. The numbers are out there. The Carolina Panthers aren't going to pay him $25 million. The Carolina Panthers are saying, and, and it's already documented. All you do is look it up. That's tagged, though. It's, it's, it's two. They're, they're, they're looking at that Brian Burns in a unique situation. They have they have two ways they can they can approach it. They can sign or tag him under the outside linebacker, Leo. I mean, uh. Elaine or defensive end, regardless of what you say on what type of sacks or what type of linebacker he is and what goddamn scheme or whatever, the Carolina Panthers go pay him $18 million. That's That's going to be his average. That's the average of the tag, $18 million and some change mm-hmm. at outside linebacker. But, but at defense, look, I'm telling you the numbers because I know them. But now, now at defensive end, it's twenty three million and change. 
I doubt they give him $23 million, Elaine, and tag him as a defensive end. You see what I'm saying? What do you think he would get on the open market? Elaine, not know. gonna get it. I, Elaine, I, man, Elaine, listen, dog, I don't, on the open market, about sixteen million, because they gon' they he'll be exactly. signed as Elaine, an outside it's, linebacker. It's only four years, ninety million. That's his average. That, that's yeah, that's what not Donald Look, out there, Well, let Elaine. me ask you this, Elaine: Would you pay? Would you pay Brian Burns twenty eight million a year as a defensive end in a four three scheme? It would be heavily incentivized if I did. Twenty five would be bad. And, and 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 just just for just but for then, shits, Elaine, you man. can't give him a contract. Just, in what, what kind of incentives are you basing incentives off of sacks and shit? Yeah, it, it would it would be it would be sack numbers. You know what I mean? Yeah, I yeah. Know. He won't get it. He won't get the incentive. And he you would be a sneaky ass GM because you will know for a fact that nigga ain't gonna reach no fifteen sacks in the four or three scheme. And he land, you can't. He's not gonna. He, you can't offer him a con, You can't offer him a long term contract and incentivize it because the contract is what it is. Mm -hmm. No, no, you can, you can. There's, there's, there's always incentives and in contracts. You know, like there's always sack numbers that you know you'll get. Oh well, you could, you could pay him yeah, more. That's but like if yearly. You that's, like that's each year. Each year, though, that you know, you, you. Contracts incentives are effective. But, but what like motivation he does he have? He lane? Well, he's averaging about nine nine sacks a year right now. Um, yeah, yeah, about nine nine on the dot. Yeah, nine. Be to be fair to Brian Burns, nine sacks is his average. Could be nine and a half. But yeah, you yeah. know what I mean. And chat, that's my six point uh, for for Dave Canals to get not get fired. He needs to maintain retain Brian Burns. He's, he's, oh hell no, nah. hell no! Nah. Nah, nah, I, I did brother. not know that's what you were setting me up for. He the gone, whole brother. time Elaine, that was your gone. that was your part. <laughs> Elaine, he got Brian Burns. Oh, not hell no, nah. Elaine, Elaine a, uh, a slick ass nigga, dog. Elaine, he's not gonna be on the team, brother. At the tent, he, he, Dan Morgan, oh, he's he been, he been not going to sign you, you him. You dirty brother. as hell. Cause that a whole nother argument. That's a whole nother argument. A whole nother oh, two hour argument for you there. Yeah, yeah, that, and that's my sixth part. Hell no. Nah. That ain't no. That's Elaine, not good. What, if, if, Elaine, if, what, what, what do you Dave think? Need the hair up. Dave need to hair up. Move on from Brian Burns. They gonna move him Elaine, to keep his job. Yeah. Nah, hey, look, shout out Elaine for the good content this morning. I'm, I'm gonna get back with your ass on this one, doggy. Please do. Please do. What do you, you think know? of the odds of them signing him, Elaine? At this point, no. right now. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Elaine's, yeah. Elaine's a slick I'm, motherfucker. I'm Shout out that. Elaine in the chat, goddamn it, Elaine that turned us up this morning. Elaine, I'm gonna let you have it, doggy. I'm still watching, man. All right, bro. Hey, yes, sir, man. I appreciate at, you well, this morning. What do you think the odds of? I appreciate you pulling up, huh? Yes, sir, brother. Hey, listen, but no, I'll pose you with another question, Leo. Mm -hmm. What kind of defense? Do you, what do you think Dan Morgan's gonna do? What kind of team do you think he's trying to build? What's his back? Now everybody done settled in at the coaching position. So Elaine, I mean not Elaine, Evero is not getting the head coaching job. So he's gonna be on the team, and him coming to Carolina is predicated on the three four. So it ain't changing. Dan Morgan not changing the defense. If if he told if he if he was changing the defense, he would have told Evero already. And, and it, that 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 have been already discussed. So we we we're going to conclude that the Panthers are still going to run the three four defense next year. So be that as it may, I believe Evero coming to Carolina was predicated on working with Brian Burns because they changed the defensive scheme around yeah. coincidentally to fit Brian Burns, in my opinion. So I I believe with a hundred percent. That they're going to keep it at three four. Brian Burns' position not going to change. If they discuss moving him around like they do TJ Watt, then you know we'll see what happens with that. But Leo, I don't. I'm not, mm -hmm. I'm not the smartest guy in the room, man. But I, if I see it, I know they see it. They saw that this defense was number three overall. They know the problem was with these was in the trenches on offense and defense. The problems in the trenches. They're mm -hmm. trying to. Move quickly as possible and the fastest way to win as quickly as possible is to not shake up things that already work right brian burns got you eight nine eight nine sacks he was on track for maybe nine or ten if he wouldn't have missed a game or two what did he miss two games i don't want to lie i don't want to make up shit i think it was one i think he left early in the number one game and he missed a full game he was um, on track for nine sacks and the three four he graded out well in pass coverage they're not gonna fuck up something 
that's already working. They're going to try to enhance and try to get quick wins by fixing things that were wrong. So if you can, they're going to probably franchise tag him, give him a prove it deal, and he's going to be on the Panthers next year. That would be the smart thing for Dave Canales to do. Because if you get rid of Burns, you need to just go ahead and commit to a full rebuild, in my opinion. If you were Brian Burns, would you would you would you would you take a tag? Would you play under a, a franchise tag? Well, he'll go kicking and screaming, and he'll act like he wants to sit out, but he's not about that life. We saw that last year. He, he was he was acting like he was going to sit out, man, but then he was showing up to all the team meetings. Yeah, I mean, it's gonna it's gonna create a distraction and controversy for sure. You get what I'm saying? Um, mm-hmm. I, he, I'll give him the non-exclusive tag that allows him to go out and hunt another deal from another team in, in exchange for some draft picks. But, yeah, I, I would not let a player of this caliber walk for nothing. It would be – No, be- no, 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 not at all. The same – they made a mistake before with Gettleman, and I can't think of the guy's name, but this is years ago. Yeah, he sent a, yeah, he sent to let him go. Get, 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 Gettleman was trying to prove a point, and, you know, he let, he let his emotions override, you know, his sensibilities. But – so oh, man. we're on the same page, though. Not not necessarily that you like Burns, but Burns has to return in some type of you have to tender him, even if you don't give him a long term deal. Right. I'm not even I don't even think if I had a choice, I wouldn't give him the long term deal right now. I would try to fit him in and the franchise tag because, you know, I, I, I got the salary cap. I'll give him the franchise tag and then let him play a year as we try to figure out, you know, What's your worth? You get what I'm saying? Let me see what you look like again in this 3-4 once we upgrade these defensive line positions for you. You get what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Uh, that, that's the only point that I'm making. And then, you know, the play so, was gone for me. So the franchise tag, well, I, I said one number. I'm, I'm not concrete on that number, but what do you think that the franchise tag number would be for him for just that, it's, that one year? It's the, it's the, it's the average of the top uh, 10 players at the position. So I think it's um, 18 million. I can find out for you guys right now. Okay. Okay. So Brian Burns, so Burley Lane, you telling me that Brian Burns is willing to play another year at the same price he was playing this year. You telling me that? Are you telling me that brother? Um, uh, He's going to go kicking and screaming about without it. any guarantees now, brother. Yeah. You know, yeah. Cause the only thing that's guaranteed is the, um, is the oh here it is I got it the only thing mm-hmm. that's guaranteed is the franchise for this year so yeah you wouldn't you wouldn't have a long term deal but I think he would even welcome the idea of improving his numbers to get a better long term contract because he is fairly young you get what I'm saying so that I mean that is some upside to that man I, I think he's like you know I only had eight sacks if I play again on the franchise tag I could probably get a better long term deal you know here's here are the numbers guys this is the 2024 um projected franchise tag numbers um where we at there we go 20 23 million i said 18 23 20. million okay 23 million dollars do you yeah. think that another team would give yeah. brian burns a long-term contract at, at 23 million dollars a year yes 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 okay I, okay I, okay because so because what it, so we, yeah he they probably would they a, a ton of teams would because but uh, Elaine so if you Brian Burns would you play under the franchise tag for one year or ask yeah. the Panthers to trade to another team that's willing to give him a long term contract we only trade him because he's not a, he's not he's he's a free agent so you can't trade him until he's under no I'm saying they gonna I'm saying they gonna they gonna, gonna franchise him and then you know trade him I'm just saying like that that'll be the only option for the Panthers because the Panthers are not gonna let him walk that they, they're not gonna do that so, so I'm saying to you the transitional tag which allows him to go out and shop for deals on his own but the other teams have to give you compensation if he gets a better deal if he doesn't get a better deal he comes and plays for twenty million dollars now everybody's happy. You're under a franchise. You're under a franchise tag with only a one-year guarantee, but you actually have the freedom to seek your own deals with your own. Your, you and your agent can go out and seek your own deals. If you can't yes, see yes. anything better, you can't find anything better. Then come back and play and get a better get better numbers. So the so, yeah, the yeah. So yeah, absolutely. So so we we concluded that we agree that Brian Burns can get a team to pay him, you know, 23 on a long-term deal. Yeah. Being that you said that the team more than likely would offer him that option, 
Yeah. What do you what, what would you do if you were Brian Burns? Would you take that um that option to go search a deal and the team get compensated and, and, and both parties win? Which would which would you do if you were yeah. Brian Burns? The beautiful part about the transitional tag is everybody wins. You brought up a good point, right? You said, Do you think he'd be happy paying under the franchise tag? And I said, No, he'll go kicking and screaming, right? That's the beauty mm-hmm. about the transitional tag. The transition tag is because listen. Okay, I don't. I want a long term deal, but you're not going to give it to me. But mm-hmm. with this tag, I have the ability to now, me and my agent can start shopping around and talking to people. It puts the onus on them that if you say you're all this and you can find a deal, then go fucking find one. That was a situation that Lamar Jackson found himself in last year. If you think you deserve X, Y, Z, then show us. Go find you. You have the freedom to find a deal, and if you don't find a deal. Here's your tender. You're you're covered for next year. This is what we're paying you. So everybody yeah. wins. Everybody yeah. wins. So what do you think the Panthers would do and Brian Burns? Like both parties, what do you think they would do? Why the unk say it's 18 million middle linebacker? Look, you can't switch his position to pay him less, man. Not middle, nah, nah, not middle linebacker. No, 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 no. Outside. <laughs> because it... Last year when he played on the 18, that's that was the asking rate at the time. But yeah. you know, the, the year change and price goes up. But well, um, so the tag he's under this year is different. That the tag he's under this year isn't showing. That's the fifth year option, which is the salary of number one is number three to number 18th highest paid at the positions, minus the top two. So then this year he would get the actual franchise tag which is the, the average of, I think, the top 10 or 15 players at the position, 1 through 15, which averages mm-hmm. out, you know, it, it averages out to be 21, but the one we were mm-hmm. going to get was likely going to be the one for 18. So, I mean, this would be the smart deal. Letting him walk for nothing would be the dumbest. No, no, that, no, that's, that, that, yeah, they're not doing that. that that's a fireable offense if yeah. you let this man walk. But I, I, I believe, I don't believe that the Pens are interested in signing him to a long-term yeah. deal. Do the Lamar Jackson thing. They got to do the same thing they did with Lamar. Because when Lamar but found the out, thing is, why, why do you think Lamar didn't get any 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 viable options? Why do you think? I'm asking you. So, one was uh, I know there were some like injuries concerns, and then even, even if he wasn't injured, there was a situation where I I think was it something like he may have not been injured, but just refused to play or some shit like that. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There was a stigma on you know him. Playing, not playing, so that kind of hurt him. Um, and then, so, and then do, like, do you think Brian Burns would suffer the same fate, though? Well, and when, and with, with Lamar, it was almost like, well, is he really a good quarterback? Is he just a runner and he's going to just keep getting hurt? You know what I mean? It's like mm, two first yeah. round picks and the con- two first round picks and, and a, contract. a contract. It's like, <laughs> uh, you know, damn. You know what I mean? That's a lot, man. That's a lot. That's what I was trying to explain to people who who on the Lamar train. I said, Last year, the people didn't sign him for a reason. I mean, this is for his rookie year, and this year was the only year he has played all the, the whole season. Yeah. So it wouldn't be it wouldn't be intelligent to get this man a big contract, you know, when he's off injured, and you yeah. know, his playing style. And I don't want to go to Lamar thing, but the playing style, you know, you know, it, it, it's 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 a bad insurance policy, yeah. and um, it, but you know that's but. But we, we we agree that Burns won't suffer the same fate. Burns will get an offer from somebody. Yeah, I, I believe so. And and who I believe it's going to be, it's going to be one of these teams that have been constantly in the playoffs that don't have the opportunity through the draft or through you know other means to get a player who can produce nine to ten sacks a year, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. If the City Chiefs or somebody would jump on some shit like this, right? The Bills. Yeah on some shit like this. The Eagles, two first round picks. Ryan Burns, they'll jump on some shit like this, right? Those are teams that would, would, would this would be a luxury for them. There's no way I could get a player like this at 25, 30 or something, something like that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's why when the Rams mm-hmm. had those two first round picks, the Rams yeah. were like Super Bowl, like they were thinking Super Bowl. They really, yeah. loaded, really loading their team up. And um, yeah, because they, they had let Von, Von Miller had yeah. he had walked away in free agency. So do you, but let me ask you this though, brother. Do you think that any draft capital would help the Panthers? I mean, the production, you can't reproduce it because you don't know. We don't know if we draft a defensive end and he can get us five sacks a season. We don't know. But I'm just asking you, if we traded him yeah. for 
uh, a second round pick or a late first round pick. Do you, do you think that would would help the Panthers going forward? Yeah, because here's the thing, man. A mm-hmm. lot of people have this this misunderstanding where it's like you get rid of a player, you have to immediately pre- pre- replace that player in that production, right? No, not really. Build strengths on your team. Don't worry about necessarily replacing those numbers. If I got two first round picks, I could maybe I go get a quarterback. Maybe I go fix my defensive line. Maybe I get that starting left, real left tackle that I need. I I can use those that capital to build strength somewhere else. You get what I'm saying? I don't mm-hmm. necessarily have to replace that particular production because obviously the mix of shit we have doesn't work. We won two games. You get what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Yeah, it ain't got it enough. So let me ask you this: What compensation, in your opinion, would Brian Burns trade garner the Panthers? Um, I I, I think a very late first round pick. Or I would even I would even because we lost on the Christian McCaffrey trade, but I would take a trade like that for Brian Burns. We're talking second, third, uh, a fifth, maybe a next year fifth, something like something like that. You get mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Um, mm-hmm. We we get that volume of draft picks. If we parlay those draft picks right, maybe trade back one or something like that, get some more draft picks. We need mm-hmm. a lot. Of, there's not a position on this team we couldn't uh, upgrade. So we need yeah. as many draft picks as possible. But, yeah, second, third, just something that equals out to a first-round pick if we don't get a late first-round pick. Uh, I, I agree. I agree. I agree 100%. I definitely agree. I just want to get clarity on it because they have some people that are outright Brian Burns fans that are um, unrelenting on their stance, whether it's logical or illogical. I wouldn't and, go to um, the Bears and be like, let's get that first overall back. We'll give you Brian Burns. That's not realistic. Uh, yeah, know? that's not that's that's not happening. They're not doing that. And um, according to reports, Jacksonville, a, a couple of teams called with interest, but I don't think it was what the Panthers wanted as far as yeah. compensation. So I think they just sat on Burns because the problem is that when Montez Sweat and the other guy, um, he went to the 49ers, I can't think of his name. When they went for second-round picks, that completely destroyed the Brian Burns uh, value as a first-round pick. And even with Sweat, when he went to the Bears and his production superseded Burns' production, and even um, Chase had some good production, I mean, that, that, that threw the Brian Burns' first-round pick away, in my opinion, for the Panthers. They, they, could, they could kill that. Now, I don't know if Montez Sweat – I know he, he had a good year. I don't know where Montez Sweat has been historically uh, with his numbers. I thought he had a couple of down years. No, uh, brother. Comparatively speaking, I've been keeping up with Montez. Him and Burns came out the same year. Comparatively speaking – I might be thinking about this. Yeah, Chase, Chase is down, but Sweat is on par okay. with, with, with Burns. Sweat missed, it, missed, I think, six games one year because he had messed his knee up. But on average, brother, if you look at the stats, when you get a chance, they are they are pairing each other. Minus Sweat missing six games. I think he had like six sacks that year. But when they play each other, when they pair them up, the pressures, the the sacks, they 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 are they are pairing each other. So um, so um I has, don't think so um, I don't think Burns. So he had twelve. Game, so basically, that's a. Uh, he has six and a half for Washington. It looks like he split his years, right? He played eight games mm-hmm. for Washington and then got six and then placed uh, nine for the Bears and got six. So that's 12 and a half prior to that. Eight sacks, five sacks, nine, seven. Yeah, it, it, it's it's comparable. Now, yeah, he went for a second round pick, you said? The Bears only oh, got a second round pick for him. I, I to be honest, I have no idea why um, Washington traded those two players. I guess they feel as though they maxed out. I heard Chase had a, a, um, a I heard I heard they had a problem with Chase and his work ethic. Ethic, that's what I heard about Chase. Um, yeah. But um, Sweat, I don't, I don't know. Um, I, I can't, also, I can't. I don't. Yeah. Also, like it just comes. Also comes like he got a second round pick, but it also may be like, man, it was really just trying to get some draft capital, move away from some players. Circumstances could be different for him and Brian Burns. And I would say, you know, uh, I don't think Brian Burns ever had. Well, okay, I was gonna say had had a five sack season, but he only played ten games this season. Yeah, he got hurt that year. Yeah, he missed the last six games. Um, So he's solid for about 
nine sacks if he starts every year. Okay, and he had twelve. Yeah, this yeah, year. yeah. Sweat, like, like I say, Sweat and Burns, they came yeah. out the same years, and Sweat got drafted before Burns, but the comp is is is, is there. They they the same player, um, yeah. but but I like I say we we don't know, but I think that um, I think that the Bears, um. I think a second round grade, I mean, a second round pick is Brian Burns. But who knows? You know, maybe some team, like you say, later on. I hope and pray that a team gives us a first round pick late in the first round. But, you know. uh, A first round value. So, second, third, fourth. You get what I'm saying? Um, Yeah. Is what what I'm hoping. And I think, yeah, a team that's late would would probably do something like that, man. You know, Um, one of those perennial uh, playoff teams that are always in playoffs, they, they would love to get a player like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, they would. It depends on um what um if they give if Jacksonville gives my man a contract if they let him go, which is very unlikely. But um, because they could Jacksonville called the Panthers on Burns. Um, mm, interesting. Yeah, they, I was like, wow, they called. Oh my god, nice, it would be a nice pairing though, man. Him and that uh, man, that shit would be crazy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I appreciate you, brother. I, I listened then. I, I was listening for about thirty minutes, and I, I was I was waking up. But I said, let me give my brother a call and just voice my opinion. I I yeah, appreciate man. you allowing me the opportunity, brother. Sir, yes, sir. I was about to man. get out of here, man. I got an appointment at eleven o'clock, man. So, man, oh, I yeah, appreciate you. Oh shit, you pushing it? I, okay, then, brother. Uh, until right. next time, brother. Take care. All right, bro. <laughs> yes, sir, brother. Mm-hmm. Hey, man. Appreciate everybody for showing up, man. We're gonna do this again tomorrow, man. You know what I mean? It turned. They try. They try to turn it into a Brian Burns show, but fell right in my trap. You know, for for Dave Canales to not get fired, he must make, retain Brian Burns. You know what I mean? Each of those six steps must be followed to a T. I'm trying to help the boy out, man. Y'all like him a lot, man. So, with that said, man, I hey, appreciate y'all pulling up, man. The 150 some odd subscribers, man. Subscriber count then went up 50 percent or so uh, in the past, like couple of days man so man i appreciate every last one of you guys man i don't know i might have to start doing like some subscriber giveaways or something man uh to uh uh uh, you know uh, some shit like that i'm be doing or something like that man just really give back to the people that's really showing me love man but with that said man thank you man i'll see y'all tomorrow man peace